Here we go. And good afternoon, everybody. And thank you so much for spending your lunchtime with me. I am here today to tell you a tiny bit about WUGA's approach to fostering diversity and inclusion. A disclaimer, the focus in the presentation is mostly gender diversity. Strengthening our gender diversity was our focus since around 2016. Of course, we have been contributing and working around as well in other areas, but that remained our main focus. With uh, past week's tragic events going on in the US, we realized that there are areas we could definitely improve as well, support and open an internal dialogue about. Therefore, we are currently reviewing our strategy, reviewing our approach, and we might refocus. We keep learning. Mm, thank you so much. Uh, I feel we can just go ahead and start with the presentation. To give you a short introduction about myself, my name is Alexandra, nickname uh, Ola, I'm a senior talent acquisition manager. I'm originally from Poland, so just across the street from Germany. Um, I moved here over seven years ago and for almost three years I am working at WUGA. And I will be speaking today to you about WUGA, who we are and what we do, why diversity and inclusion matters to WUGA, where the industry currently is and how WUGA compares to it, as well as our approach and what we do, real life examples from WUGA life. Ah, okay. So we have been founded almost 11 years ago. We are 250 employees all based in Berlin with 45 nationalities. 44% um, of our workforce in 2019 moved to Berlin to join WUGA, and we are experts in story-driven casual games. Our key games, uh, in case you want to try them out, is June's Journey and Pearl's Peril. But why are we here? Why am I here? And why they were saying inclusion matters to us? Um, for all we know, we do live in a diverse world in terms of race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And yet, this is what we experience and see on every day basis. Our power structures, our corporations, their executive management teams, the TV industry, etc., are fairly homogenous mostly male, middle-aged, white, uh, heterosexual, many cases of Catholic upbringing, um, simplifying, but that means that those power structures are executing their power in a homogenous, unified way, groups that are existing in our society. For example, women who make roughly 50% of the society under underrepresented their interests, their needs, are not represented properly in the most important institutions, um, decision-making bodies and authorities, but that also means that their ideas, their input, their creativity, their innovation, their possibilities, potential is not utilized, very pragmatically speaking. So it is not only unfair, but uh, also quite dumb business-wise. And the problem, of course, is rooted very deep in our societies, uh, sociopolitical standards, settings, setups, and it is not really different for the gaming industry. Female players are growing in numbers every second, yet games are created predominantly by men. And historically, gaming industry was not the most comfortable and safest place for those who identify as female. And at WUGA, we try to constantly challenge it. Especially that around 80% of our players identify as women. Our audience is diverse. They are from all parts of the world and lean towards female players of age 35 plus. USA, Canada, Australia, Japan, Germany, UK, France. Those are just a few examples of countries of WUGA's fantastic reach. So how WUGA is doing when it comes to gender diversity? After years of hard work, we can now see that we have been bumping up our percentages year 
by year. Long way ahead of us still, but we are 40% of WUGAs that identify as female. That is twice the industry standard. And now you're with me here in for a bit of a shocker. I told you 40% of WUGAs are identifying as female, which is great, but we still do have some weak points. Our management team with some pictures on the left is not the most ideal diverse. However, we are working hard on that too. And we went from zero to 12 and a half percent in the last year. And almost 35% of our heads level are identifying as female with some pictures of them on the right. Um, we have almost 30% of people managers who identify as female, but only 17% women working in engineering. Um, although 35% of game teams, including artists, uh, designers, producers, product managers, et cetera, so people working directly on creating games are identifying as female. Um, so again, a long, long way ahead of us, but we are proud what we have achieved so far. So let's go further. What WUGA wants to achieve? What is our approach? We genuinely care about creating an environment where everyone feels like a part of WUGA under one of our most important company values, one company, where everyone has access to the same facilities, the same activities, the same chances, opportunities, enjoy the same experiences. But why it is so important to us, you ask? We are truly committed to building a diverse and inclusive culture in our organization. And you, you know, there are many reasons why, and the question in the perfect world would never be why, but why not? Um, of course, beside the obvious, there's a mix of business and societal reasons. We simply do not want to miss out. Um, it is not only fair to be a diverse and inclusive company, organization, institution, or really any power structure. It is also tangibly improving the business. So we want it and we want to celebrate it. I mentioned already that we are 250 people, diverse people coming from over 45 nationalities. We are relocating people to join WUGA from all over the world. But it is important to us as well to showcase diversity in our games. And I want to show you a few examples. Um, Nikki Bennett on the left is Jones. June is the main protagonist of June's Journey game, ex-husband. Joseph Ahmadi on the right, on the first picture, is Nikki's new partner and he's a doctor as well. Um, June, the main protagonist, is initially upset with him in the game, but managed to heal the wounds by getting to know Joseph. Dolphine, the picture on the right, is Amelie's, and Amelie is an important character within the game, Mother. She lived in Paris in the late 1800s. After being forced into prostitution, she flees a village. There she falls in love with the booksellers and lives with her before having to go on the run again and finally dying in a monastery. Um, so how do we and how do you can get more diverse characters in games? And I'm going to paraphrase uh, here our head of writing, Rebecca, who summed it up perfectly, um, answering the question, how do we get more diverse characters in games? She answered, hire diverse people and let them work. And that's the truth. But how, how, how? How do we create diverse and inclusive culture actually at WUGA? We work on two fronts, external and internal. I seem to have a little bit of a freeze, apologies. Da -da -da. Okay, we work on two fronts. Yes, I'm getting it. Apologies for that. So what will get us to change the status quo externally? Certainly we focus on three pillars. One is employer branding, second is leveling up the playing field, and third is supporting important to our employees' causes. What does it really mean? Our aim here, um, when it comes to employer branding, is to position ourselves as inclusive, diversity fostering employer to attract potential and of course retain existing employees. We do that by participating in shows, job fairs, celebrative events like Pride, 
to spread the work and excite participants. We also use many specialized job boards directed at diverse or underrepresented communities. Apart from that, when it comes to leveling up the playing field, WUGA supports local and beyond local communities, especially uh, underrepresented ones. Whether it means, you know, finding a partner you can change the world with or organizing and facilitating our own initiatives. Our aim is as well to invite, to support and to show and tell young people for all branches of society and diversity about the gaming industry to excite them for this industry. So across the years, we have cooperated and facilitated many initiatives on um, girls game workshops, women who called hour of code, gamers parties, pride parade, war child institutions, women tech makers, and more and more and more. We have also arranged many scholarships, especially for young women entering gaming industry. And I wanted to show you here a little bit of Insta love. Here is a picture of winners of one of our sponsorships and from uh, on the right from one of our girls games workshops. Um, when it comes to supporting important to employees initiatives, this is the third pillar that we do externally. WUGA is big on supporting it, uh, on supporting the initiatives, but also employee resource groups. Additionally, just recently, we have started an internal initiative to amplify everybody's voice within WUGA. That means a donation matching program. It is a fairly new initiative, uh, still needs to be polished, but the idea behind it is that WUGA will support causes important to employees ones that they personally support. But what will get us internally? Over the years, we have came up with seven pillars of fostering diversity and inclusion at WUGA, which I would like to share with you now and talk about them to you. Number one, the backbone of everything we do, our code of conduct. It outlines our expectations for all those who work at or with WUGA, as well as, of course, the consequences for unacceptable behavior. We expect everybody working at, with WUGA, employees, partners, customers, to abide by this code of conduct online, in person, as well as all the one-on-one -on -one communications. Number two, support employees connecting with each other, make everyone feel a part of WUGA, part of one company. Um, those are all the initiatives that bring people together. We have a um, monthly team events budget. Also in Corona times, uh, mystery lunches paid by WUGA, tons of other company activities, parties, events, gatherings, as well as monthly LGBT plus lunch sponsored by WUGA. Support sharing knowledge. And sharing knowledge at WUGA is one of our values and we leave it every single day. In the case of fostering diversity and inclusion, it is important to give each other, um, each one of our employees a chance to share their voice. So at WUGA, everyone can become a speaker, a mentor, a trainer. We have brown bag lunches, five minutes of fame. The stage is open equally for everybody. Um, apart from that, of course, we invite world-renowned experts to speak about various topics. We also facilitate self-learning. And it is important to set expectations, you know, share the literature, audit what resources, what books do you have in the office. We have created at Wuga a base of resources where everyone can, you know, come over, pick their resource and self-learn on the topic. Um, Apart from that, we have created an internal guide consisting tips to include everybody's voice, what to do in case you are a witness of inappropriate behavior. Um, so we came up with a policy surrounding it, uh, tips on how to outsmart your own bias. Um, and of course, a huge resource library of learning tools and, and other resources. And of course, we do also have internal trainings on, on, on various areas, communication, feedback, leadership, etc. And on top of that, WUGA also provides everybody with education budget where they can choose what they want to grow in, what they want to learn. And it is 2000 euro per year and they get everybody gets extra two days off for that very purpose. 
We also um, set clear, very clear expectation on how to acknowledge different viewpoints, how to make sure everyone's voice is heard, whether it's in the meeting, all hands meeting everywhere, as well as constantly gather anonymous feedback from our employees on variety of topics. In order as well to, um, to, to, to foster diversity and inclusion, you need to constantly examine, constantly challenge, and modify your work practices. We have paid attention a lot about how can we make sure our recruitment, our hiring process is inclusive and free even from subtle biases. Um, and I bet we are far from perfect, but it is a process. So what we did, we started with our job descriptions. We audited it and we tried to make, make, make sure that we use gender neutral wording. There is tons of open source um, tools out there that you can use for free in order to make sure uh, that your job descriptions, your uh, external communication to, to, to candidates, for example, is free from those biases. Um, we, of course, also advertise in diverse channels and foster referral programs um, with which uh, watch out. Sometimes they may actually add to homogeneity. Um, and I'm speaking here about referral program. Um, and uh, last but not least, we make sure that we have diverse panels and diverse decision makers when it comes to the hiring process. And of course, support employees initiatives. We have tons of so-called employee resource groups. And that's just uh, some of them on the slide. Change does not happen top down or down to the top. Change happens on all the levels and needs to spread equally. Therefore, it is important to have everybody on board and everybody being involved, everybody being heard. Last but not least, um, it was important for us to introduce benefits that support diverse group of our employees, you know, from flexible work schedules, re-onboarding after long leaves, uh, supporting family planning, mental well-being, where WUGA cooperates with mental health specialists who support employees in coaching, in relocation, in stress management, therapy, or whatever they need. Apart from that, since COVID hit us, um, and we started to work from home like many other companies in the world. We introduced work from home productivity budget of 1,000 euro for our employees, where they can set their home to their comfort with a nice chair, a monitor, or a headphones, or a desk, whatever they need to feel comfortable while working from, from home. And a little bonus, an extra one thing. Uh, what is important and what we have seen successful for us uh, is constantly be sending a message. You know, it is a tiny example, and but but small things really do matter. On the first day of New Wuga, we provide them with a Wuga logo pin with a rainbow logo. That already sets the newcomer on what kind of culture we do have. It is a pretty strong message. So diversity, inclusion, must be rooted in our in, in any company's culture if they want to foster it. It is important as well to make an office comfortable for everyone um, with gender neutral um, bathrooms, with a nursery or a kids room, all those tiny but at the same time huge things contribute to creative and inclusive and AFER culture. And I wanted to share with you, here are some pictures of, of Hugas on Pride last year's. Um, so you can see us, so you can see people of Wuga. And to um, summarize to you and share with you our learning, um, building diverse and inclusive culture is everybody's job. Never top down or down to the top, everybody's. If you want to build an inclusive culture, you need to set expectations from the get-go and then sit and listen. Um, it's important to know your status quo, know your weak points, and then challenge, discuss, keep learning constantly. Um, ask and listen 
to everybody equally. And of course, the last but not least, celebrate diversity and celebrate your achievements. It's super important. Um, thank you so much. And I want to just ask, as I'm furling you to the presenter world, I would like to ask you for, for your feedback. You can enter the feedback form via this link, um, www.ga slash battercount. I would greatly appreciate your feedback so I can learn from you as well. And please do not hesitate to say hi, connect with me, ask me anything. And I want to thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexandra. Um, what a great and strong me message. And I think it's super, super important to um, get this message out into the world and in more companies. I think it's really impressive what you already did in your company and um, yeah, what you're still doing. Um, I think everyone should, um, how do you say it in English? Look up to that. <laughs> Yeah, really. Thanks. I really, really like it. Um, now, I think we might have some questions. I need to check the chat one second. Uh, yes, we have a question from Lily. She's writing, super cool. Sounds like a great place to work. I think <laughs> you mentioned hiring for values. How exactly do you do this? Mm -hmm. We have, you know, we have uh, five values that we have at Tuga that are very important. And we did resign from, you know, the idea of cultural feed because it's, 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 it's sometimes going into the direction that might be not necessarily really inclusive. There are certain things that are important for us, like thoughtful communication, inclusive communication. And we are going around that. We do have scorecards um, where we, you know, talk about uh, with our hiring managers about the directions that we want to go. What does it mean, thoughtful communication? For for us what does it mean one company for us and then they're looking for these values in our uh, in our candidates in that humility in being humble uh, and that is what is what is driving our recruitment process i hope this answers your, your question yeah i hope so too lily if not uh, then just ask. reach out right or oh, exactly um yeah and uh, one question for me is um yes. do you feel uh, there should be m more support from the society in that even uh, but, but even more is not the right word because yeah. I think there should be more but uh, what yeah. exactly uh, would you wish for? Yes, um, well, I would wish for a society where we're of equality and of inclusion for everybody and of course we do have a lot of challenges to overcome uh, in Europe, in Americas, everywhere in the world, unfortunately. And sad thing is that we never make, uh, we never learn on our mistakes. That's my very personal opinion. So definitely, yes, I think there should be, especially on the level of the system, because if the system is changed and the system is supporting inclusion, is supporting diversity, then it spreads on the whole society. If the system is limiting it, then it's very hard to, to, to fight through it, even though we have to, and we should, and we should raise our voices about it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and do you also had um, uh, the word is missing. <laughs> um, did you meet many people who spoke against you, who said it's not working like that? Did you have many um, yeah, restrictions? There are challenges, definitely. And, and you know, I wanted to also uh, say here that especially being in the gaming industry and entering a lot of various markets or trying to uh, enter various markets, various countries that might have some restrictions when it comes to um, displaying diversity, let's say that I have been talking about our, um, our, our our homosexual couples in our games. That is always a blocker, but you know, sometimes you have to say, even as a business, uh, after that, you know, we're just gonna do, and we just have to do what we what we have to do. We want to we want to showcase this. We want our games 
um, be inclusive and 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 represent the actual society, right? That is out there, um, and we're just gonna do it and roll with it, mm -hmm. no matter what yeah. some markets may limit us on. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have uh, an example for a game where you have these inclusive, diverse um, protagonists? Yes. So, I, as I mentioned, June's Journey game right now has um, a few uh, very diverse characters within the game. Um, maybe I'm hoping that I can say that, but we are working as well on some projects that <laughs> might be very exciting and I'm hoping to share it soon. I probably cannot say more, but it's, it's, it's going to be uh, um, very representative of what we believe in as well. So yes, it's all in the making. Our games as well um, have diverse characters and it's very important to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. I'm looking forward to hearing more about you and your games. Uh, 